my water is warm. Hello, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. Um, I don't think this is going to be a start to finish one. I think this is going to be a try to finish something type vlog. It is Wednesday. Now, usually I start my vlogs on either, I say usually, the two times that I've done this before, I've tried to start my vlog on either a Sunday or Monday, but it has been the hottest fucking two days of my life. And I'm currently sat in my room. Um, Alexa is telling me that my uh, weather is 19 degrees but it is humid and I feel like I'm sat in a jungle. Like it's like, I'm sweaty, it's really unpleasant. It's really unpleasant and not how I wanted to start this vlog at all, but I knew that I had to start this vlog, otherwise I just never would. And I'm heading down to Folkestone today, I'm house sitting and then I am going on holiday to go for my brother's wedding. I've got loads of stuff going on, I've got loads of books that I'm taking with me, but I think I'm just gonna catch you up with basically covering what has been happening. So obviously, I had like 11 books when I first started my start what you finish vlog idea. I've narrowed it down essentially to two. So I have fully DNF'd The Night Country. The writing style of this is very, very similar to Holly Black. And I've said before that I really, really enjoyed the Cruel Prince trilogy, but I didn't enjoy the modern fairy tales as much. Like one, it was really fucking long and two, I just, I just didn't care enough about it and I don't care enough about this one. So I have fully DNF'd this one, um, but we do have um, The Crooked Heart, which is the newest release. I say we, uh, I bought it in for myself and then my flatmate Lizzie bought it off me from Waypoint Books. So um, we, I will get myself my own copy eventually, but I've got her newest release, which I'm more excited about. So I'm going to DNF this one and I'm also DNFing the Tales of the Hinterlands for now, but I might just unhaul this one in Hazelwood and see if I come back to the Tales because that's essentially just a collection of short stories and I feel like I will enjoy it. I feel like I will enjoy it and it means that I can swap a book directly as opposed to a DNF where I have to DNF nine other books. But so that was one DNF. That was, a, that was a hard DNF. Another hard DNF was Anna Dressed in Blood. Basically, I got to the point where I realized that this is essentially just V.E. Schwab's Cassidy Blake series, but YA instead of middle grade. And whilst that might be good for some people, it really wasn't my thing. I thought the writing style was very simplistic. I thought the character was obnoxious and I just couldn't agree with any of the things that he was doing. And I just didn't care. Um, and the only reason I was continuing with it was because it was a lamentable library pick. Now, considering Kelly and I had a discussion a month ago about when we were going to do live shows, we have since not organised any live shows. And <laughs> I have a whole bunch of shit going on in July and August. So live shows, again, just aren't going to happen. We might need to do like a Christmas, just cover any of the books we did read at the end of the year type thing. Um, but for now, I've DNF that. I might keep hold of it so that I can try and remind myself of certain things when it comes to a live show. But if that's not happening, I'm just going to unhaul it because I just didn't enjoy it. And then a soft DNF was The Shadow of Rookhaven. I've got nothing against this book. I will just get to it eventually. Um, I'm tempted to save it for Gothtober, but I'm not sure. I'm just not in the mood for it. I'm not in the mood for something that I know is going to actively make me sad. I like sad books. I like books that um, really pull at my heartstrings, but it's too fucking hot. I am in the mood for very easy middle grade fantasies and I'm in the mood for romance um, because I can't, I can't be thinking about trauma right now. It's too fucking hot. So those are the three that were kind of like initially on my TBR that I've still got hold of. I'm still going to be reading Bluebird. I'm not reading it currently um, because I think I want to do a vlog where I kind of try and tick off all of the Luna Book Club picks, but I will do that when I get back from my holiday. Plain Bad Heroines, I am still reading. I have about an hour left of the audiobook. Really, really enjoying that one. But because my drive to Folkestone is going to be longer than an hour, I won't be reading that on the drive. So there's no point in me taking that with me to Folkestone. Um, I will probably finish the audiobook when I'm in Folkestone and then wrap it up when I come back and it won't be part of any vlog. I just need to get it finished. Really enjoying it though. Love the vibes. Love that literally like, it's just sinister, isn't it? It's just like a really good time. The Dragon Republic, I'm also not taking with me um, just because it's quite a chunky book and whilst it would work quite well for like the drive and stuff, it's just not what I'm in the mood for right now. So that's a soft DNF. Um, and then The Missing Marquess, I'm not fully DNFing. I'm leaving here for kind of the opposite reasons for uh, Playing Bad Heroines in that it's just so short. There's no point me taking it with me because I will, I'm not going to keep it. Like I, I've enjoyed it um, and I will probably see if I can find the rest of them as a series, but 
it's so short and I, it's a it's a secondhand charity copy that I'm like I don't need to keep it and I know that by reading it as a TBR vet I can put something else on my TBR that I'm more excited about there's no point in me keeping it so knowing that there's no point in me taking it to Folkestone with me because I will just unhaul it when I get there like I'll finish it and unhaul it and then I won't actually have it to wrap it up or like have my notes in and things like that so that's kind of where I'm at with all of those with regards to the books that I'm definitely taking I am definitely taking The Witchlings by Clarina Ortega I am taking The Light Fantastic by Terry Pratchett I am taking The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon I am taking I'm taking The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa which I'm tempted to make a kind of like wedding vlog because I'm going to be a bridesmaid that could be really fun I did consider because I was going to take uh, the wedding crasher dial the second dial a for auntie's book and say no to the dress except I did the um dial m for murder that's not dial m for murder. that's the Agatha Christie one I did the um four aunties and a four aunties and a wedding which is the second book a month ago uh, which was silly of me because I knew in advance that, that was something I wanted to do and I finished saying no to the dress yesterday and that was shit so I'm going to do a completely different content thing for that I'm just going to take the wedding crasher um, and then books to read I've got a whole bunch that I'm going to do for specific blogs whilst I'm out there but those are just generally ones that I'm interested in reading and I will pick one of those at random for my audiobook in the car like I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to be in the mood for when I start driving it is cooler today um, but it is not by any means cool. I am very sweaty and hot. So the next thing on my to-do list is basically to go through all of this um, because I have stuff that I know will be out of date and there's no point keeping it um, and other stuff that is in date that I need to take to Folkestone with me so like shampoos and shit like that so I'm just going to go through that I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff away make sure that everything is packed my clothes are all packed in my suitcase I'm basically ready to go I just need to pack up all my little things and then I need to find my passport otherwise I'm not going to Gibraltar <laughs> Um, but I will probably catch up with you when I'm in Folkestone and I will tell you what I listen to, what, where I'm at with it um, and just generally catch you up when I get there. But yeah, I'll catch you up when I get to Folkestone. <laughs> Thursday morning, Jesus Christ, where has this week gone? Um, I drove down to Folkestone yesterday and then I've been house sitting, but I did get some reading done, so I thought I would catch you up on the two books that I'm currently reading. So I ended up going with The Last Continent for my audiobook read. Um, I've been collecting these canvas book covers pretty much since 2019 when I was gifted Colour of Magic for my birthday and they are kind of the things that I either I get for myself or I get as like Christmas presents etc. Um, but I'm trying to do them in rinse, like in series order rather than the full chronology. So I've been doing the Rinseman series and I'm pretty sure this is like the fifth or sixth of the Rinseman series. Um, and basically this is, um, a, a God has created Australia, but Australia isn't working. Um, there are things not quite right, which is just really fun. But one of my fellow booktube pals is Abby from Abby of Pelinor and she is a, a not a geologist, but she's like a geographer. Um, and the amount it talks about rocks just really made me think of her. 
that. I'm really sorry, Abby. I feel like I'm completely bastardizing your degree, but as a scientist um, who enjoys a classic, I feel like The Last Continent would be so, so much your thing. Um, and I feel like you probably could read it out of context. Like, I feel like there's enough in this that you wouldn't necessarily need to read it in like chronological or anything, but um, it's, that, it's a fun time. But I read 265 pages of that, which means I've got about 150 to go, which I can easily get done today if I actually get some time to like sit and listen to an audiobook um and then hardbacks i've been reading certain dark things still now this was technically on my start to finish but i've only brought like three things to read read outside of the stuff i want to take to gibraltar with me so i have this i have the book of night by holly black because it's beth from book nest's patreon pick for their book club and I've got The Glass Coffin, which is the third in the Darkwood trilogy. Um, because I really enjoyed the first one. The first one was really fucking good. The second one, Sequelitis. And I feel like I just want to, I want to prove to myself this trilogy was worth holding on to. Um, because if I don't like the second book, as much as I like the first one, I will probably unhaul all three. That's just the kind of person that I am. I mean, I will just be unhauling them to my flatmate because I know that she would keep them. Um, so they would still be in my house, they just wouldn't be my responsibility anymore. Do you know what I mean? So my plan for today, I'm actually in town quite a bit today because I've got some meetings in town and I've got another catch up with regards to the booktube meetups, which is really exciting. But they're kind of like close together. So it might be a bit of a frantic afternoon. And I'm really tempted to pop into the Oxfam bookshop as well. I don't need any more books, but I'm giving to charity. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to be a good person. Anyway, I've been dog sitting, as I've said, but I'm going to head home back to my parents' house now um, and try and get some actual fucking work done. So I will catch up with you again when I've read something or have something to catch up on. Hey, so it is Saturday evening and I just thought I would catch you up on some of the reading that I've been doing. Obviously, I've been out of the house all day today, so I've only got a little bit done but i'm still pretty happy with it so i finished the last continent by terry pratchett i gave it four stars i really enjoyed this it was very silly um it has kind of um themes of evolution and creationism and stuff like that and it's very clear which side terry pratchett fell down which was really fun um it's set in both madagascar and australia so there's like a weird mix there um it has time jumps and things like that which aren't always my favorite but i actually quite like the way this one was done and it's just generally a silly really good time and a definite improvement from the last one that felt very orientalist because at no point does this really lean into like aboriginal or anything like that it so it, it doesn't feel like it's like whitewashing a culture or whatever it feels like it's very much taking the piss out of the colonialists in this one so i appreciated that um i did read a couple of like short stories yesterday some like short graphic novels and things like that because my flatmate and i have a challenge where we are trying to read a hundred books and see who can get there first and she has been absolutely speeding through some books recently and i had fallen really far behind but now we're back neck and neck, both on five, uh, 95 each. And I'm convinced that I'm gonna go on holiday and come back and she'll have finished it and I didn't get a chance to. But who knows, who knows? She has plans this weekend, so that might help me. <laughs> but one of the ones that I specifically wanna talk about is Snitch by Olivia Gatwood. And this is a Audible original short story um, about a woman who is a very prolific lawyer who works with getting rapists off rape charges, basically. And then she is confronted with an instance where as a teen, she witnessed a rape and now the rapist is being held accountable. And it was a really interesting, really jarring modern novel um, or novella. And um, very timely, very timely, considering all the stuff with like, it, it references the Me Too movement anyway, but certainly with all the stuff that's been happening um, recently with the Johnny Depp trial, etc. It was very kind of enlightening with that definitely worth a read um for any feminists out there i think it was a really really interesting read and it's olivia gatwood who then narrates it as well the main character is not a good person she's very much a messy person but i think conversations like that require nuance and sometimes you need a, a character who is harshly corrupted so that you can appreciate what the corruption is the one that i've moved on to is return to fear street you may now kill the bride i'm 70 pages into this one and i know that it's split between two eras so at the moment we are very much in the 1920s you've got this main character called ruth ann who is in love with this guy who 
it's very very early on you find out that he's basically going to marry her sister and even though he was the one thing that was hers and her perfect sister has everything um that they're getting married so that's a whole thing but she basically is like you're never gonna marry him it's never gonna happen and then on the day of their wedding <laughs> He says you may not like the vicar says you may now kiss the bride they kiss and then the husband just throws her off a cliff so that is literally where i got to <laughs> at this point so i've still got another 200 or so pages to go and i'm like i like i don't know i don't know how to react to that i've never read anything by like the like the fair street franchise before i didn't even really know it was a thing um until i spotted this on my distributor's website and i was like yeah i'll give it a go i'm really in the mood for horror i'll give it a go and i'm intrigued to see like where's the story gonna go from that like is the curse gonna be that women die on their wedding day it's gonna be something like that because like obviously with a couple of weddings coming up maybe not the best choice i did consider doing specifically a vlog of this one and wedding crasher because i'm going to weddings um but I don't know if my friends are going to be okay with me vlogging at their wedding. So I don't know if that's a weird thing to do. Like, is that a weird thing to do? I think it's a weird thing to do. I might get like a few clips of like the general like cuteness of the wedding. But like, I feel like anything more than that is probably like an invasion of privacy or something. I don't know. But um, anyway, I am enjoying it. But it is very much because it's stylized to the 20s. It very much feels like it's trying to be historical fiction. Um, but to be honest, I have zero plans for this evening, so I will probably finish this one, wrap up for Sunday morning. I have got a christening tomorrow as well, so there won't be much reading done then. So yeah, I will probably finish this one, wrap it up whenever I finish it, whether it's tonight or tomorrow morning, um, and then post this Monday, starting my next vlog tomorrow. Um, and maybe, maybe we should do something a bit more structure. <laughs> maybe. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go have my dinner now because we've got curry. Um, I'm very excited about it. I haven't had curry in ages. Um, so yeah, I'll catch up with you in a bit. So I was going to catch you up when I got to the end of this, but I am halfway through. And the key main character of this is absolutely deranged. She is fully, fully unhinged. And basically she's a 17 year old who resents her older sister, won't admit that she resents her older sister and keeps like pranking people in the most egregious way and basically she did a really horrible thing that like really fucked over her sister and really physically hurt someone like a year ago her sister and her aren't talking and now she's taking it out on her sister for not talking to her because she like because she deserved it like she's an absolute psychopath and like usually i'm all for psychopaths right female murderesses she's here for it this one i find her irritating and that's very disappointing i love a female killer she's just not it and i can't work out if it's maybe because she's not a reliable enough narrator for me so there's a case of like there was all this preamble all these horrible things were happening and then you're told by basically another character confronting her that she was doing it all along because it's all from her perspective and like it's really horrible and really gruesome and oh yeah by the way she can do magic and she's been doing horrible things and it's like that kind of took some of the spark out of it and it doesn't really feel like a horror it doesn't feel horror if enough because i don't feel like the main character really understands what she's doing i feel like she's just kind of like stumbling through it and i think good horrors or certainly the horrors that i enjoy the most are the ones where there is a key antagonist that they're kind of battling against and if you are going to be an unreliable and unlikable narrator I feel like we still need to empathize with you to, to a certain extent for you to be interesting and she's just not interesting she's just a petty 17 year old and honestly she can get in the sea so I don't the more I read this the more I don't see it getting higher than three stars I'm saying it now good morning so it's Sunday I did manage to finish you may now kill the bride uh but i did not manage to catch up before i went to the christening so i'm now back from the christening hence all of this um <sighs> mate it got worse it got worse there was a plot twist at the end that was so like ham-fisted in there and i just i think it's gone from a three stars which it was coasting at the entire time to a 2.5 that ending was so awful and it just it was just steam training into absolute disaster and i hated it so <laughs> one great book this week one not so good book this week and one very thoughtful audiobook 
as a weekly vlog goes that's not too bad um i'm gonna leave this here and then start my next vlog for the following week i hope you've enjoyed it um leave a comment down below if you would like to let me know that you were here feel free to leave either a knife emoji for murder or a bouquet your choice treat yourself to something from waypoint because it supports me and my content and other than that have a nice day